cross, folks. Oh, the message of the cross of Calvary. The Lord Jesus Christ died to set you free from your sins. Died so that you don't have to go to a drunkard's hell. Died so you don't have to go to a fornicator's hell. He died so that you don't have to live as a fornicator. You don't have to live as a drunkard. You can put down your Guinness and you can follow the God of the Bible. The God of the Bible that's going to judge you one day. The God of the Bible that's going to cast sinners into hell. Why he died on the cross so you don't have to go there. So that instead you can be saved. You can be converted. You can be transformed. You can be redeemed. You can be born again. That's the God of the Bible. The cross. The cross of Calvary. Think about the message of the cross, folks. And it's not just that Jesus died for your sins. It's so that you could die. And you could die to sin. And you could live instead for Him. That's the true meaning of the cross. It is a victory over sin for you. So that you could die to your sins. Die to your, die to your drunkenness. Die to your fornication. Die to your partying. Die to your blasphemy. So that you could die to sin and live for Him. Live for the Lord Jesus Christ. Live as he intended. You're not made for goodness. You are made for God. You are not made to shoot your guts up in the morning because you're hung over. No, instead, you're to live holy. You're to live righteous. And God Almighty can give you the power through the Holy Spirit, through the gospel, that you can live a life of victory, a life that's pleasing to him, no longer a servant of sin, but now truly a servant of God. A child of God. God wants to transform your life. He wants to transform you. He wants you to be changed, to be renewed, to be redeemed. But it's only going to happen. Only going to happen, folks, if you truly repent. If you turn from your sins. It's a pedestrian, from pedestrian your sins zone. And destroy your life. Uh, it's a pedestrian zone. There's no cars. That's great. But, but, but people, man. That will listen, the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. It's the way of the cross, folks. We keep moving, we'll be okay. Okay. You've got to be crucified with Christ. Turn your life over to Him. Surrender to Him. Turn from your sins to real repentance and believe in the glorious gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. He'll give you the Holy Spirit. He'll indwell you. He'll give you power in your life. Power to live a life of victory. Power to be an overcomer. You don't have to be a slave to sin any longer. You don't have to be a fornicator. You don't have to be a blasphemer anymore. No, instead, you can be set free. You can now be empowered through the power of the Holy Spirit to live a life of victory. You can live pleasing to God Almighty, but you must repent. Those sins, those sins that have entangled you, yeah, those sins that have taken you captive, those sins that are now your master, they're going to drag you to hell. But God Almighty, pity, the Lord Jesus Christ, He can But instead, you were made for the glory of God. And that's how you should be living. And that's how you can be living, but only through the power of the cross. Only through the power of the gospel. Only through the power of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Only through the power of the Holy Spirit. You must repent, Lord. You must turn from your sins to real repentance. And you must believe. Believe in the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe in the death, the burial, and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Turn from your sins and believe in that gospel. And Jesus Christ will set you free. You'll break those chains that hold you bound. Those chains that hold you addicted to alcohol, addicted to cigarettes, addicted to, to bad humor and bad jokes. God Almighty, through the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, will break those chains that hold you bound and set you free. But you better count the cost. There's a cost if you want to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. There's a cost, folks. You've got to die to yourself. You got to die to this world. Listen to the New Testament preachers. Listen to the New Testament writers. John the Apostle. He said that you're not to be a friend of the world. All that is in the world, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. All that stuff is of the world, and it'll drag you to hell. You're not to love that world or be a friend of the world. James says, "Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that friendship with the world 
friendship with all this world is enmity with God. Read it, read it. Read it. Friendship with the world is enmity with God. Your love affair with sin has made you an enemy of God. And God Almighty is not going to be slack with his enemies on the day of judgment. No, instead, God Almighty, why, God Almighty describes how he's going to repay his enemies to their face, to destroy them. You need to take it so very seriously, guys. This is the most important thing we're ever going to think about. Because on that day of judgment, the day of the Lord, the verdict is final. There is no appeal to that almighty court. No, God Almighty is going to get it right on that day. And on that day, it'll be too late. Too late to obtain mercy. Too late to, to take the advantage of God's offer of forgiveness. It'll be too late on the day of judgment. But right now, right now, right now, it is not yet too late. I'm still breathing. God Almighty has not come back to judgment yet. But one day, rest assured, he will come back. One day, it will be too late. Hey, maybe you won't live to see the Lord Jesus Christ come back and part that sky. Maybe you won't live long enough to see those heavens on fire. But you're going to die one day. The Bible says it is appointed unto men once to die. No karma can be in the end. You don't come and go. The Bible says, the Lord says it is appointed unto men once to die. And after this, the judgment. And that judgment is final. You're not ready you're not ready if you're not now following the Lord Jesus Christ. You're not ready, folks. You're not ready if you're not now walking in the Spirit. If you're still walking in the flesh, you're still an enemy of God. You need to change. You need to change, guys. You need to be transformed by the Holy Spirit into a child of God. Because right now, as a friend of the world, as a sin lover, by definition, you're an enemy of God. You're a God hater. And God is not going to be slack with his enemies. Think about it. It's the most, it's the second worst position you can be in. To right now be out here being a sinner, floating your sin in the face of God. No, it's the second worst position you could possibly be in. Because now, now you still have time. Now you still have an opportunity. Now you can still be saved. Now, now you can still be delivered. Now, now you still have hope. Why, Paul the Apostle, he was reminded the, the Christians in Corinth about some Old Testament scripture. This is the accepted time. This is still the day of salvation. I'm trying to warn you. I'm trying to warn you, folks, about the day of judgment. That's a, that's a, that's a, that's a, but this is not yet that day. This is still the accepted time. This is still the, accepted time. This is still the day of salvation. Now you're asking a question. Do you really want to know why? Now the sinner here, he asked a question. Why? Why is this why? There's only one reason. You deserve the wrath of God. You deserve the wrath of God. Right now, if the ground opened up and you drop right into hell right now, God would be totally just in doing it. But the question why, why are you not in hell yet? Why are you not in hell right now? The, the question why, why well, the answer is because God is long-suffering. God is long-suffering with his enemies. God, God is willing to put up with his enemies for a time and try to reason with them. Try to reason. Try, try to get their attention. Try to warn them. God is being very long-suffering with sinners all across the world today, even here in Dublin, Ireland. God is long-suffering with his enemies, but, but, don't confuse the issue, folks. God's patience is not God's patience is not North Carolina. Okay. You can go out tonight and get blasted. You can go out and drink your Guinness, but that does not mean that God is all right with what you're doing. He's got a bag of weed, is it? Instead, God is trying to reach out to you, trying to get your attention, trying to get you to understand the message of the cross, and trying trying to get you to see your desperate need for the gospel. You're wicked out here today, wicked, lost, evil, in the sight of God. And it's not even Drinking your James, James. smoking your cigarettes, mocking the gospel. You're an enemy of God. God is not pleased with you. God does not want to just give you a big, a big comfy hug. 
No, God wants you to get a good Bible feeling. God wants you to have a good Bible feeling. Because you're proud of God and your sin and your shaking in the face of God. But God will not be mocked, folks. I see it, Don't God shake your head. Don't shake your head. God will not be mocked. God will not be mocked. God will not be mocked. On the day of judgment, you're going to reap what you sow. He asked if he continued to live in sin. This is basically what he asked. And he asked if he continued in his sins, would he go to hell? Well, the obvious answer is of course. Of course, if you continue in your rebellion against God, God is going to give you what you deserve. However, however, if you turn from your sins, if you repent, if you repent, turn from your sins and believe in the gospel, well, God would serve even bar save even bartenders. Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners. Yeah. Jesus Christ came into the world and he saved the lost. And here you are. Here you are in Dublin, Ireland, mocking the gospel. And God Almighty is trying to reach out. Oh, look at that story. All drunk or bastards have their parking in the lake of Phil. All fruit cakes look at you. Get a bottle of a can. And it will be off for you. Look down here. You're right. You're down here rebelling against God. And Jesus came. For you. He came to seek and to save that which was lost, and here you are. However, however, if you won't be found, you will be damned. If you're if you're not willing to, to turn from your rebellion, if you're not willing to listen to the gospel, if you're not willing to humble yourself under the hand of Almighty God that He may exalt you in due time, if you're not willing, you're going to hell. It's a guarantee. You're right now. If you're out here partying, living in sin, excusing your sin, not the gospel, you're on your way to hell right now. And and if you want to go to hell, you need do nothing. If you want to go to hell, if you really do, if you're that determined, you're that hardened, you're that proud and arrogant, if you want to go to hell, you need do nothing. You're going to reach your destination. It's going to happen automatically. However, if you do not want to go to hell, but instead you want to go live with the Lord Jesus Christ for all eternity in heaven, if you don't want to waste your life puking your guts up in the, in the gutter or in the toilet because you're hungover, if you don't want to waste your life serving sin and serving yourself and serving Satan, but instead you want to live for the Lord, you want to live for the glory of God, well, you have the mind and the choice. One hope that you might be saved. And that, folks, is to turn. To turn from your sins. To turn from your rebellion against Almighty God. To change your mind about Him. To no longer love your Guinness, but to reject it, to abhor it, to see it as an offense to God. No longer, no longer love your identity as a drunkard. No longer loving your sin. But if you change your mind about your sin, change your mind and repent, that's what yeah, repentance no. means. Won't you turn you from your sin. Pour, pour it out. Pour it out. Pour it out and I'll talk to you. Pour your beer out and I'll talk to you. All right. Now listen, drunkards, if you want to talk to the preacher, you want to ask him a real question, you come out here and pour your beer out and I'll talk to you. However, if you pour your beer out, pour it out. No, because you're not listening to me. All right, if you listen to me, you pour it out. Now, the Bible says that the God of the Bible is going to judge this world in righteousness. And the Apostle Paul, when he was preaching that message in Athens, why he said, God commands all men everywhere to repent. That's the message we're trying to get to, through to you here today. A message of repentance. The modern, the modern gospel presentation lacks that key word, repentance. But that is the message that the first century church preached. That's the message the Old Testament prophets preached. 
That is the message that John the Baptist preached. That is the message that the apostles preached. And most importantly, most importantly, that is the message that Jesus Christ preached. May I ask you a question? Jesus Christ said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Can except you repent, you, you shall all likewise perish. My friend right there will talk to you. You want to talk to somebody else? No, you do not. Now listen. That message is not an option. The Bible describes the Apostle Paul writing to the Corinthian Christians. He describes how the Christians, the church, how we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead. Be reconciled to God. Yes, listen, for he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. Now listen, we're ambassadors. We're trying to give you a message from the King of Glory, the King of the Universe. Give you a message from your Maker. And that message, folks, is repent. Turn from your sins. you got to change your mind about them. Those sins are going to drag you to hell. You smoke your cigarettes and you drink your beer. What's the fruit of those things? Where do those things lead? They lead to a broken marriage and an early grave. But the God of the Bible, he warns you, Jesus Christ, he warns you, the thief has come. The thief has come for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But listen, listen, folks. Jesus Christ said, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Jesus Christ wants you to have real life, eternal life, abundant life. But you're not going to find it chasing the devil. You're not going to find it in an orgasm. You're not going to find it getting stoned. You're not going to find it getting blasted. No, all you're doing is shortening your life. Shortening your life. The wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death, folks. You're smoking yourselves in the early graves. And your God, the God of the Bible is not bluffing when he's telling you about hell. No, the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God. See, wages, the wages of sin is death. Wages are something you earn. You work hard. You work hard puking your guts out. Puking your guts up in that toilet in the morning. That's hard work. I don't envy it. I'm glad I've been delivered from that. Hey, I've been there. I used to be a drunkard. I used to puke my guts up in the toilet just like a lot of you. But you know what? Jesus came and saved me. Now, who said I'm a hypocrite? Somebody said I was a hypocrite. Who said I'm a hypocrite? You're not going to own up to it? All right, fine, we'll move on. The wages of sin is death. You work hard, hard slaving away at sin. You work hard laboring, puking your guts up, ruining your health, ruining your life, ruining your marriage, ruining your finances. You work hard at sin. And you know what you're going to earn for all that labor is death. An early grave here and an eternal hell. The eternal death. We're all gonna do it. Now we all. Yes. Hang on. He actually said something that was pretty intelligent. He said, we are all going to die. Yes. That's right. My friends, myself, all of you and one day. Here. It's going to that die. is right. Now then what? Come then on. What? Then what? Then you have different different um, things that people say. All right. You were doing good. All right. Well, let me let me let me tell you what the Bible says. The Bible says. Well, then this is what's important. What the Bible says, not not what anybody else says, not even what I say, if it's contrary to the Bible. But what the Bible says is, it's appointed unto man once to die. Me, him, you, everybody. You're right. We're all going to die. But after that, the Bible says, it's appointed unto unto man once to die, folks. And after this, the judgment. Now, Jesus Christ, he came into the world to save sinners, amen? amen. Jesus Christ died for the, the sins of the whole world, amen. Now, the problem is, though, the same Jesus Christ that tells you he died for the sins of the whole world, the, Bible, the same Jesus Christ also warned that many are called, but few are chosen. He warned that you got to enter in at the straight gate. He said, because... Broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. Wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be that go in there at. Hey, if you want to go to hell, you're going to have plenty of company. But it's still a very lonely place. No, the Bible says, the Lord Jesus Christ says, you need to enter in at the straight gate. Wide is the gate, 
and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be, many there be that go in there at, because straight is the gate, folks. Straight is the gate, and narrow is the way that leads to life. And few, few there be that find it, Although God's trying to show you loud and clear, God's trying to show people all the time that wonderful way, that straight and narrow way, which is the way of the cross, the crucified life. It's the way of the gospel, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. So guys, you've been fairly warned. You can't say nobody ever told you. You've been given the truth of the gospel. Now what you do with it, that's up to you.